All right, lads, this video has been made possible due to my YouTube members. So as always, a big thank you to all the Giga Chads currently on the screen. What happens when you take an F5C's flight model, give it substantial Urtaground munitions and six AIM-9M Urtua missiles? Well, you kind of get the JAS-39. The Gripen, as it became known, were designed to replace the aging JAS-35 Draken and the JAS-37 Vigan. It was to be a light, single-engine Mach-2 fighter with self-defense and ground attack capabilities, similar to the role of the F-16 and the F-18. In other words, it was never really designed to be an air superiority fighter, like an F-15 Charlie for example. It was designed to be rugged, cheap and simple, allowing it to be maintained by a small group of conscripts directed by a single skilled engineer. Compared to many western designs, which are well known for being hangar queens, looking at UF-16, the Gripen generally has a low dollar cost per flight hour. This caught the attention of many nations, and the early model JAS 39s had substantial export success, hence why we have a South African Gripen currently in the British tech tree. But during the mid 2000s, the Swedish government decided that an upgrade was needed in order to keep up with contemporary fighters. The main issue was the engine and avionics. What resulted was the JAS 39A. This, however, to Sab's displeasure, has pretty much been a failure on the export market. Despite having an upgraded engine and an IASA radar, due to the limited production run, the price per unit is relatively high, coming in at an estimated cost of $85 million. The Gripen is more expensive than the F-35A, which costs roughly $82 million per unit. A 5th gen stealth fighter, which puts every other plane in the world to shame, costs less than a 4.5 gen light fighter, God bless Lockheed Martin and the economies of scale. Despite the rather gloomy outlook in real life for the Gripen, in War Thunder, as I'm sure you've heard, the Jazz 39 is the new talk of the town, somewhat breaking the stale top tier meta. It is agile, fun to fly, and carries arguably the best IAM missiles in the game. For many Swedish players, myself included, the Gripen is a huge addition, not really because of its air to earth capabilities, or rather, this is the first Swedish jet to receive precision guided bombs, finally giving the Swedes a viable and reliable cast option to go along with their borderline OP top tier tank lineup. Anyway lads, I'm Sarko, if you'd like to know more about this jet and whether I'd recommend it, stick around for the rest of the video. Alright lads, welcome back. The Gripen arrives in the 8th rank of the Swedish tech tree and sits at battery rating 12.3 in Arcade, Realistic and Simulator. We also have the Gripen C in the British tech tree, which is a complete copy and paste with only two changes. The first change is that the South African one has a different camouflage. But the major difference is that grinding the Swedish tech tree won't make you want to game end yourself. Anyway, it's going to cost you 410,000 research points to unlock the vehicle, and to purchase it, it's another cost of 1,100,000 silver lions, which you probably won't have if you've blown it all on the Christmas crates. Seeing as the Gripen is a turny boy rather than a speedy boy, the expert and ace qualifications are essential for this jet. Seeing as you're going to be pulling 12G turns all the time, resulting in your pilot being 2 inches shorter after every match, the least you can do is fork out some cash to give him some better G tolerance. For the Expert Quali, it's another 1,100,000 Silver Lions, and for the Ace, it's 3,600 Golden Eagles. Being a Tech Tree vehicle, the Gripen will of course come stock, only armed with two AIM-9L equivalents. But with the plane's helmet mounted display, good agility, and 80 countermeasures as standard, the stock grind of the Gripen isn't too bad. First, I'd either recommend getting the countermeasure upgrade, or the RB-74 upgrade. The latter allows you to take up to 6 AIM-9Ls into a battle, and the countermeasure upgrades allows you to choose which type of countermeasures to take in. Next, I'd go for the FLIR BOL. These are countermeasure dispensers located on the missile pylons themselves, increasing your FLIR count from 80 up to a mammoth 720. I'd then next go for the RB-71 on the engine upgrades, until you're able to get to the RB-74M in rank 3. When you have 6 AIM-9Ms and over 700 countermeasures, the Gripen somewhat becomes an unstoppable force of nature. 
But for all the base rushes out there, the Gripen maybe isn't such a hot pick. While it does get bombs and rockets, they are relatively low yield and cannot be carried in high enough numbers to destroy a base in Ur RB. Therefore, it's pointless trying to unlock the ground attack weapons early in an attempt to speed up the grind by bombing units. Instead, just focus on being a rat in order to unlock those OP AIM-9Ms. I said in the introduction that the Gripen flies like the F5 Freedom Fighter. So what did I mean by that? Well, the Gripen has very good nose authority, and it is capable of high angle of attack turns. It also has incredibly good energy retention in high speed manoeuvres, allowing you to sustain a lot of your earth speed during gentle manoeuvres. However, if you commit to a merge, the Gripen remembers that it has a delta wing and dumps all of its speed. This is where the F5 comparison comes in. The Gripen's biggest weakness is its engine output power. Only producing 7530 kilos of thrust, the Gripen is slightly underpowered. This is one of the main reasons for the upgrade to the Gripen E in real life. With clean wings, the A model has a climb rate of 245 meters per second, but with 6 missiles and a drop tank, that drops down to 179 meters per second. For comparison, the F-15 with 8 missiles and 2 drop tanks has a climb rate of 255 meters per second. To be fair though, not many planes can compete with the F-15, so what about another Delta Wing? The Mirage 4K was recently added and has also been slated as a top-notch dogfighter. Well, with 8 Magic 2 missiles and 2 drop tanks, the Mirage has a climb rate of 228 meters per second. While the Mirage can negate the high drag nature of a Delta Wing with its insane levels of thrust, the Gripen unfortunately has to obey the laws of physics. Once you become slow in the Gripen, it takes an absolute eternity to get back up to combat speed, which makes you incredibly vulnerable to the vultures lurking at top tier, looking to send you a lovely explosive Christmas gift, with free express shipping. So while your proficiency at dogfighting is a huge strength in the Gripen, it ironically usually leads to getting Gripen players killed. It's kind of like the M18 Hellcat players in Ground RB, who get themselves killed at the start of a match by overextending. Just because you have a lot of something doesn't mean you should use it. Your primary defense in all top tier jets should always be your speed rather than your turn rate. So keep your speed up, roll and flur, and speak those incoming missiles without dumping all of your air speed. If you are forced into a 1v1 though, then the Gripen certainly is a capable fighter. The point I'm trying to make is that you will usually win that 1v1 fight, but then you will almost certainly lose the battle as you'll be left slow and vulnerable. Overall though, the kinematics of the Gripen are good, you just cannot afford to get this thing slow. But my dear viewer, kinematics don't really carry planes anymore, so what about our earth war weapons? Well as always, let's start with the radar. The Gripen uses the PS-05A with 4 radar search modes. By default we have the Pulse Doppler Search, as well as track while scan, regular search, and pulse doppler velocity head on. The default radar scope is also a reasonably wide 60 by 13 degrees off of the nose, and we also have a focus 20 by 6 search cone and a wide 120 by 6 degree search cone. All of these radar scopes have pluses and minuses, but for the average player, leaving it on default is pretty much fine. The pilot also gets a helmet mounted display allowing you to slave both the radar and your missile's IR seeker onto a target, allowing you to fire at targets high off bar sight. This is a huge advantage in furballs at top tier, but in a knife fight, the HMD isn't that useful, as unlike the SU-27, the Gripen's IR missiles aren't famed for their high off the rail pull. Instead, the HMD should be used to acquire target locks of enemies you are dogfighting, due to the Gripen also having a radar gun lead indicator. The combination of both of these systems make you incredibly deadly in a close range gun duel. The radar also has another use, and that is the guidance of arguably one of the L's of the Gripen, its semi-active radar homing missile. This radar does have an illuminator and a very good pulse doppler velocity search feature. Honestly, the radar itself cannot be faulted, but what I do have an issue with is the missile you fire, the RB-71. This is essentially an AIM-7E2 with better initial guidance off the rail hence the dogfight designation. It is a much shorter range compared to the AIM-7M, but arguably better in short range engagements. 
The RV-71 has pretty much the same maneuverability as the AIM-7M, but it has a much shorter rocket motor burn time. This means the RV-71s aren't really BVR capable, they are more only really useful in a head-on merge. It's also far slower than the R27ER, but the, probably the biggest issue I have with it is that it uses a hard point which could be used for AIM-9Ms. With War Thunder's loadout system, you could compromise and take one RB-71 and five IR missiles, but I guess that is up to your play style. I personally use six AIM-9Ms. But your stock missile is the AIM-9L. This thing has got a bit of a bad rap lately, as it's seemingly very flow hungry now, more so than in previous patches. This is almost certainly just due to a placebo effect. Players have probably learned how to counter it now pretty effectively. The fact it lacks IRCCM is also a big reason for it being weak, especially considering how several tons of magnesium is dumped into the sky every game now. People have also got used to the AIM-9M and tried to use the 9L in the same way. With a 9M is strong side aspect, the 9L is only really strong from the rear, and then it is still easily flurable. Anyway, onto the moneymaker, the AIM-9M. Essentially a 9L, but with IRCCM. It is effective side aspect up to about 3 kilometers, but rear aspect it is a bit shorter. Any further away, and the enemies have way too much time to counter the missile, making it pointless to fire. And they can sometimes defeat it kinematically if going fast enough. The AIM-9M is almost certainly the most effective IR missile currently in War Thunder, whereas the R27ET has better performance. Planes can only carry two of those missiles at a time, whereas the 9M can be carried in lots of four, and in the Griffin's case, six missiles at a time. The reason for the 9M being so strong is the inertial navigation. When the missile detects a flare, it turns off its seeker and travels to where the enemy plane would have been. This has pros and cons. At medium ranges, the 9M is pretty easy to flare from the rear aspect, as once a missile picks up flares, the enemy plane can maneuver and get outside the seeker's search zone before it reactivates. This is a lot harder for an enemy to do if you fire its side aspect, as a missile will already be turning into the enemy's predicted flight path. In order to counter a side aspect 9M, an enemy would have to pop flares and then completely reverse their turn in order to get outside the seeker's field of view. Seeing as people are zipping around the battlefield at the speed of sound, this obviously cannot be done in a few seconds, leading to a lot of people being game-ended by the 9M. While the 9M is very strong at medium ranges, at least in terms of IR engagement distances, it is far weaker than the R-73 when it comes to dogfighting. This is to be expected, and to be honest, you aren't really going to be having many 1v1 dogfights anyway. And finally for our air-to-air weapons, let's cover the cannon. This is the Mauser 27mm, same weapon found on the Tornadoes. It has a fire rate of 1,700 rounds per minute, which presents us with a bit of an issue, as a Gripen only holds 120 rounds of ammunition. This is a notable weakness, especially compared to the American top tier jets, who sometimes carry up to 5 times as much 20mm ammunition. It heavily limits your ability to dogfight, as well as prevents you from farming ground units during the downtime of a match. Through my time playing the Gripen, I try to minimise gun engagements, as the gun placement is also pretty weird, making it quite hard to aim. The ammunition belts also have pretty low amounts of tracer, making it only really reliable to use with your radar gun lead indicator. Overall though, the year to wear performance of the Gripen is incredible. The helmet mounted display, in combination with the great kinematic and turning ability, allows you to get AIM-9Ms off at people who do not expect you to get a shot on them. Because this usually results in a side aspect shot as well, the 9M usually just annihilates people out of the sky. While the semi-active radar homing missile certainly is a weakness of the Gripen, I think the 6 AIM-9Ms and generally overall decent air to air capabilities more than make up for this. Alright, let's look at the ground attack capabilities. But first, let's look at what the pilot is capable of doing, other than getting shit faced on absolute vodka and pulling every blonde 10 in the bar. Apart from unlimited girlfriends, the pilot also has CCIP for the cannons, rockets and bombs, giving you an accurate release point indicator for all of your ground attack weapons. If we take another quick look at the modifications, we can see that we have two trees to research. One is mostly dumb fire and the other precision guided weapons. For our bombs, we have 120 kilo and 500 pound freefall and hydrag variants. The 120 kilo bombs can be carried in sets of four per hardpoint for a maximum of 16, whereas the 500 pound bombs can only be carried two per hardpoint. 
On the Gryphon, only the wing hard points can be used for ground attack ordnance, with the wing tips being reserved for IR missiles, and the belly hard points reserved for your T-Pod and an additional fuel tank. We also have some 13.5cm rockets, which use a heat warhead containing 6 kilos of TNT, allowing them to penetrate 500mm of armour. These rockets are quite large, limiting the amount you can carry it into a battle. You can fit a single pod onto a hard point, with each containing 6 rockets, giving you a maximum rocket load of 24, plus 2 IR missiles. A weapon that seems impressive, but in practice is a little underwhelming, are the RB-75s. These are American AGM-65Bs, still using the TV guidance system, meaning they cannot be used in night battles and cloudy weather. For the close air support connoisseurs, you are far better off using the selection of GBUs and your targeting pod. The Gripen uses the Lightning 2 pod with second generation thermals and an auto tracker, meaning it tracks an enemy's movement, allowing you to focus on defensive flying rather than guiding ordnance onto target. For our GBUs, we actually have four to choose from. We have the 10, 12, 16, and 24. Both the 10 and the 24 use a 2,000 pound bomb, with the 12 using a 500 pound bomb, and the 16 a 1,000 pound bomb. The two outer wing pylons can carry only the smaller GBU 12 and 16, whereas the two inner wing pylons can carry any bomb unit. I personally use two GBU 24s and two GBU 16s. For those of you who are wondering, the GBU-24 has less explosive filler than the GBU-10, but has better gliding kinematics, allowing it to be dropped further away from those dirty Panzer mains. Overall though, the ground attack capability is pretty good in terms of close air support and ground realistic, but in air realistic, it's not really worth using the bombs or rockets. Well lads, thank you for making it to the conclusion. I personally use the Gripen for some fun in RRB and as a reliable cast chair in ground realistic, alongside my Giga Chad Swedish lineup. In air battles, I take out 20 minutes of fuel, a drop tank and 6 AIM-9M missiles. I generally play as a rat and try to come in from the sides. I generally won't bother with rear aspect 9M shots, instead closing the distance, baiting them to turn and then launching side aspect. I wouldn't bother trying to use the bombs or rockets on this plane, the bombs are underwhelming and the rockets can't be carried in high enough numbers to justify the lack of 4 AIM-9Ms. In ground realistic though, the payload of 2 AIM-9Ms with 4 GBUs makes the JAS-39 a very reliable cast plane. Overall, I'm very happy to recommend this jet, it's fun to play and was needed to fill a niche in the Swedish tech tree. While it was recently nerfed in terms of its AOA capability, it is still an insanely good dogfighter as long as you manage your airspeed. Anyway lads, thank you very much for watching. As always, a huge thank you to my YouTube members. This channel would not be possible without your support. So a massive thank you to Lola Alphonse, Tans, The Boa LX, Dr. Bob, Tomster013, RS28 Sama, Pumpen, Schlunty, Van Haler, Diogenes, and newest member, Econ. Once again, a big thank you lads. If you made it to the end of the video, leave a comment saying spicy meatball.